Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Rick and if this is your first time here, thank you for watching. Check out the Canyon vlog if you're interested in more information about the Canyon Ultimate that I have here. This is the vlog number six and I don't have a whole lot to update you with, but I did want to talk about a couple of quick things. And uh, first and foremost, someone had asked if they could see a side picture of me riding on the bike because they're about the same size as me and I know it's difficult trying to figure out the correct size on a bike that you never really get to ride until it shows up to your house. So just for reference, if you guys haven't seen the other videos, I'm 5'9", I have a 31 and a half inch inseam and I went with the medium. I have all through the videos I talk about why I went with the medium, but um, here's a quick clip of me just riding past the camera. I unfortunately didn't have anyone here to film me at the time, so hopefully this will answer the question that someone had posted, give you an idea of what I look like on the bike. Um, I don't feel stretched out at all. This is, you know, the bike feels amazing to me. It's a little more stretched out than I was on my Canyon Super 6 Evo, um, but uh, I found this bike to be incredibly comfortable and I have absolutely no regrets going with the medium. So let's check out that clip real quick. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Uh, sorry it's not the greatest video of me going by, but I tried to slow it down and I did different hand positions on the bar so you can get an idea of at least how I kind of look on the bike here. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, in the last video I mentioned that I was having all kinds of problems with flats and I had um, gone from the Schwalbe's that came on the bike. I made those tubeless because they're tubeless ready wheels and I got a huge tear and then I went to uh, the local bike shop here and I got some specialized uh, Roubaix's, I think they were, S-Works Roubaix's. And nice tire, same kind of deal though, I blasted one of those. So I just got frustrated and I put on some clinchers that I had here at the house and I rode those for probably a month. And then about two weeks ago I did go back to tubeless because it's just nice to have the tubeless. I got a lot of, well I say, I think I got two or three just silly flats with the clinchers, you know, just tiny little holes, which are frustrating. Um, because the rain's kind of calmed down around here, I haven't had all those big rocks and dirt and crap on the road. So I've been fortunate I haven't hit anything uh, crazy. So that's good news. Um, anyway, so what I went with here, these are, these are the GP5000 tubeless tires. And they're about only a hundred bucks for both of them. So I was very happy with the price. That's pretty much, 50, 60 bucks cheaper than the other tires I had purchased. And I've used GP4000s a lot when I used to race. I really like the tires. Um, sometimes they do have some sidewall issues, but they're a nice tire and they do last for a decent amount of time. All the reviews said that they're a complete and utter pain in the butt to get on wheels. And I will attest to that. By the time I was done, I was sweating to death out here in my shop trying to get those on and uh, finally got them on. But they are definitely a struggle. They're not an easy tire to get on. And these are 25s, if I remember correctly, I went with 25s. We'll measure them and we'll take a look. But uh, they're a nice riding tire. I, I'm gonna say that I don't think they're as supple or as maybe as comfortable as the Schwalbe's that came on here. But those tires were super nice, but they wore out really quick. And in fact, let me show you the rear tire. So hopefully this is focusing here. I don't know if you can see how flat that is. But that was about 1,300 miles on the rear tire. So the, these are not long lasting tires. They rode amazingly well, but um, they don't last super long. This is the front tire, so you can see the difference. There's pretty much no, no flattening at all of this tire, same mileage. And that's not anything on a trainer, that's strictly on the road. So um, those are very nice. But anyway, the GPs, these are a nice tire and they're inexpensive and you know they've been on here like i said a couple weeks haven't had any issues with them they ride just fine they're fast they're a nice tire can't complain about them at all and the price is nice i also mentioned in a couple videos back that i was going to pick up a um, like a big hole rep repair kit and i showed that in one of the videos but it did show up haven't had to mess with it yet but basically it's just like um fixing a puncture on a big tire on your vehicle 
where you basically make the hole a little bit larger and then you stuff that little, I don't know the best way, it looks like a head used to play some pipe cleaner. Looks like you put a sticky pipe cleaner through there and it fills the hole just to get you home. So I haven't had to use it thankfully, which is, <laughs> which is a good thing, but I do have it now just in case I get a giant flat out on the road. The last thing I want to cover just real quick, and I, I want to say that I did talk about it early on, but um, it's something that I think was just a little bit of an oversight, either maybe by the mechanic that did my bike, or maybe it's just something Canyon doesn't necessarily do, but I want to show that to you. So right up here, you can see this cable here that goes to the front brake. Um, the way it comes out of the handlebar and goes right past the frame here, uh, it's actually rubbing on the frame pretty much all the time. So when I got the bike, this sticker was not on here. That's something I put on there. And you can see it's already marred pretty well. And actually after I think I had the bike, I rode it maybe three times. I noticed that the paint had already had a little bit of a, it wasn't through the paint, but it definitely had affected the paint already. So if you get a new Canyon, that's something that you definitely want to check out and put one of these little protective stickers on your frame for sure. They did have one over here on this other cable, um, but they did not have one up front. And this cable definitely rubs. I'm not really sure how you could avoid that just by where the hole, the entry hole in the fork is and the way it comes out of the frame here. But um, that's something just I wanted to mention. I'm pretty sure I did earlier, but I was checking it out again the other day when I was washing the bike and I thought I should mention that in one of the vlogs. So other than that, I mean, I can't say enough good things about the bike still. It's absolutely phenomenal. It is comfortable, it's fast, it handles amazing. It descends, it climbs. Um, I, Every time I'm going out to ride, I'm excited to ride this bike and it just feels, it feels awesome. So um, again, I don't race anymore, but I do put in anywhere 10 to 12, 13 hours sometimes during the week and I still love to ride. I, I climb my local mountain all the time, even though I'm you know, kind of a bigger guy for cycling, but uh, I love to ride and this bike just makes it awesome. So, and again, that's coming from my Super 6 Evo High Mod, which is a phenomenal bike of itself, but this really is a whole nother class. It's just, uh, it's, it's phenomenal. So if you're looking at Canyon, I highly recommend the bike. No significant issues at this point. Uh, check out my other videos if you have questions about sizing or if you want to hear a little bit about the ordering process. And again, if you guys have questions, please send me an email. You'll find that in the description. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. If I know the answer, I'd be, be happy to help you. So thanks for tuning in. We'll check out you next time. See you soon.